Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Hey, if you're new, my name is Bobby. This is actually a video that I want to react to a long time ago. It is Stephen Fry on God, the meaning of life. So for people that don't know, Stephen Fry is an atheist, but moreover, he is an actor, a broadcaster, apparently a comedian as well, a director, a narrator, and a writer. So he's quite the prominent figure, especially in the UK, but as it is with so many of those celebs, most of them, many of them, are actually atheists. So therefore today we're going to hear his opinion, his very well respected opinion on God. It is always so fascinating to me because the mainstream media always loves to pick the brains of atheists on the topic of God, as if they have some hidden knowledge, some sort of revelation that they will tell us about. Of course, there is a reason why they interview those people. There is a reason why they push atheism in the society. But that is a topic for another day. Guys, before we jump into this video, do me the favor. If you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And check out the links in the description box below to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Suppose what Oscar believed in as he died, in spite mm. of your protestations. Suppose it's all true. Mm. And you walk up to the pearly gates and you are confronted by God. What will Stephen Fry say to him, her, or it? I will go basically, what's known as the Odyssey, I think, I, I'll say bone cancer in children? What's that about? How dare you? How dare you create a world in which there is such misery that is not our fault? It's not right. It's utterly, utterly evil. Why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God who creates a world which is so full of injustice and pain. Oh man, they always think they sound sophisticated, but ultimately it's the repetition of the same old argument, right? The argument of evil, the question of evil. How can there be such an evil God? We see evil all around us. But this comes from atheists that do not believe in objective morals. If you're an atheist, you do not believe in God, hence you do not believe in a universal standard of what is right and wrong. There is no right and wrong, there is no good and evil. If that is your worldview, how can God then be evil? You say that it is evil when children have bone cancer. How? There is no right and wrong. There are no rules to this game. This is what the atheist claims. There was a big bang. Everything came into existence. This is simply materialistic. We are biological life forms. We are space monkeys on a spinning rock. And now it is survival of the fittest. Where do you find morals in that world view? You don't. And therefore, you simply appeal to emotion. You appeal to whatever feels good. But this is exactly the same argument that vegans take then. Vegans say it is wrong to harm anybody, right? It is wrong to harm people. Most people agree with that statement because people subscribe to humanitarianism. They subscribe to universal human rights. It is bad to harm any person. And therefore, by that standard, we extend this view onto animals now. Because we as humans, we find it reprehensive when we attack other humans, allegedly. And therefore, we shouldn't do it to animals either. It is wrong. Yet again, there is no right and wrong in the universe. The vegans will agree with this. But it is simply wrong because we don't want to experience pain. And the animal doesn't want to experience any pain either. Why is pain bad. Even the most famous atheists like Sam Harris don't have a direct answer to that. They will simply tell you, yeah, I don't have to tell you that it is bad because it feels bad and therefore the alternative is better. They do not understand that they do not have a spectrum of right and wrong. They do not have a spectrum of good and evil. They simply follow whatever feels right. And of course, ultimately, such a society is doomed because everybody just does whatever feels good to them. And like that, you weaken a society. Honestly, I don't have to tell you anything about it because you actually can see it in this day and age. All the problems that we see now in the West stem exactly from this ideology. Do not hurt anybody, do whatever feels right for you. But that is such a juvenile perspective, it is so extremely superficial. What does it even mean? You're not hurting anybody. So in order for something to be evil, I need to go out and punch somebody, otherwise it's never evil. This is of course absolutely ridiculous. It is two consenting adults after all, don't you see? Two consenting adults to what? Have people never changed their opinions? How many consenting adults, especially if you look into women in their 20s, 
have gone out, been promiscuous, jumped from one guy to the other, and then came to regret it in their 30s. They regretted their life choices. They've been traumatized for life. It happens on a daily basis in the West. But it was two consenting adults. After all, they just engaged in sex. It is totally normal. Everybody can do it, right? If you go back in time, just two generations roughly, this was reprehensive in the West as well. But now it is out of a sudden the norm. Based upon what? Based upon a godless society that doesn't know wrong from right and simply follows its desires. That's what I'd say. And you think you're going to get in no. on that? But I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to get in on his terms. They're wrong. So now, there is somebody. If I died and it was, it was Pluto, Hades, and if it was the 12 Greek gods, then I would have more truck with it because the Greeks were, they didn't pretend not to be human in their appetites and in their capriciousness and in their unreasonableness. They didn't present themselves as being all-seeing, all-wise, all-kind, all-beneficent. The sorry because the God Okay, so in order for you to relate to God in your own admission, those gods need to be more human. That's basically what you're saying. You cannot accept that there is a God that is ordaining everything that is happening, and it has a higher purpose, it has a reason why it is happening, and you simply cannot see that reason. You simply cannot accept that because you believe you are God. That's literally what it boils down to. You're worshipping your own intellect. You're worshipping yourself. You believe that you know it all. But ultimately, as I said already, this is juvenile. I always give the father and son example. My son is three years old. He loves to watch Paw Patrol. If I wouldn't turn off the TV, and by the way, every time I do turn off the TV, he starts crying, but if I wouldn't turn it off, he would probably watch Paw Patrol for three days straight without eating. Every time I do turn off the TV, as I said, he would start crying. Matter of fact, it is as if the world ended. It is the most horrific thing that can happen within his limited reality. Paw Patrol in that moment is the most important thing. And how can you take it away from me? Why? I am this evil, vicious monster that took away the thing that he loved the most. Do you understand the picture that I'm painting? In your limited human brain, in our limited human brain, this is not an insult to you, we are all limited, we are human beings, we don't get to see the full picture. The full picture is seen by the creator of the universe. And this creator knows right from wrong. This is why he revealed what is right and wrong to us. We can read it in the holy books, but the point is that there is right and wrong. And not everything that is right feels right right away. And not everything that is wrong feels wrong right away. There are many vices that people are engaged in. If I look at Stephen Fry, for example, I can see a clearly obese man. So Stephen Fry obviously is indulging in certain foods that are not good for him. But I'm sure they feel good in his mouth. When he is eating donuts and cakes and whatever he might choose to eat, I'm sure it feels good in the short term. But in the long run, now we see this old man getting fatter and fatter. And who knows, maybe developing a disease due to his choices. But choices is actually the key word here, because the question of evil is not truly answered within the Christian worldview. And now he, he's an atheist, but he comes obviously from a Christian background, from a Christian country, the UK. And the Christian description of the problem of evil was never satisfactory to me either. This is why I left Christianity and accepted Islam, alhamdulillah. Because within Christianity, you have Adam and Eve, and they're being punished forever. And moreover, then we inherit that sin, and we are evil, and now we have to repent. All of it is a big guilt trip. In Islam, it is much more pragmatic. In the Quran, we read... Truly, we did offer El Amana, the trust or moral responsibility or honesty and all the duties which Allah has ordained to the heavens and the earth and the mountains, but they declined to bear it and were afraid of it. But men bore it. Verily, he was unjust to himself and ignorant of its results. So this is truly a beautiful verse if you ponder upon it, if you reflect on the meaning of it. Because the verse suggests that humans, by accepting the trust, chose to undergo the test and bear the responsibilities that come with it, unlike the rest of creation, which declined to undergo this test. So think about how beautiful this is. Of course, life is hard, man. We all agree upon that. Life is tough. Even in Buddhism, you find life is suffering. We all agree here. However, what's the point? 
What is the point of all of this suffering if there is no meaning behind it? In Islam, we have the answer to this. It is a test, a test that we chose out of our free will. It means that everybody, every human being that you see here chose to be here. You might not remember it anymore because it happened in the previous life, but you chose to be here. To paint a more materialistic, atheistic picture, imagine being in a virtual reality. But you chose to be in this virtual reality. Now being fully immersed in this virtual reality, you of course do not remember that you consented to it. But that's the part of the game. That is the fun part. Imagine yourself getting tested in a proving ground where you do not even remember that you consented to it in the first place. But the point is, you consented to it. And now it is up to you to succeed in this test. Another example would be, I'm going to sign up to compete in a martial arts tournament. As somebody that competed in martial arts, let me tell you, when you are in the fight, you absolutely forget everything that happened prior to it. You're simply there, you're executing your moves, and you do not remember that you consented to it. In that moment, you're simply doing it. You're simply fighting. And now imagine somebody being in the ring, being in the cage, being on the mat, simply complaining about how vicious, how violent that sport is. And this is so cruel, and why are we doing it? That is basically your perspective on life. God who created this universe, if it was created by God, is quite clearly a maniac. Utter maniac, totally selfish, totally. We have to spend our life on our knees thanking him? What kind of God would do that? Yes, the world is very splendid, but it also has in it insects whose whole life cycle is to burrow into the eyes of children and make them blind. They eat outwards from the eyes. Again, another appeal to emotion fallacy. Boo hoo, boo hoo, so evil, evil, evil God. What is evil about it? Is there evil in this world? The atheist will say, no, it is all subjective. However, if you truly believe that there is objective evil, then there must be objective good as well. I mean, you said it yourself, the world is splendid. And if you agree with that premise, then you have God. That's what it is. Then you have God, a creator that set the standard of what is good and what is evil. However, you do not have that standard within your worldview. You simply have your opinion. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. And now somehow the whole world has to bow to your opinion. That is the Western mind, of course. This is why they colonized so many countries, imposing their Western worldview onto those countries. Because they simply worship themselves as God. Whatever the West says is right must be right, of course. Now let's get the truth into the school, into the kindergartens even. They are not hurting anybody, right? But ultimately this really boils down to the tainted theology of Christianity because they do not understand what the prayer is for, what getting on your knees is for. He mentioned that, right? Why would I get on my knees for God? Within Islam we know that the prayer is not for God, the prayer is for us. And when it comes down to godless practices such as Buddhism, meditation, etc., I'm sure he has no problems with that whatsoever, right? Oh yeah, I'm sure it's good for mental health. When you look at the prayer, it is all about humility, understanding that you're just a human being, a limited, flawed being that doesn't understand the whole picture and therefore is bowing to his creator, the creator that gave him life. Without our creator, we wouldn't be here. Therefore, we show gratefulness, we show appreciation, and we bow to our creator. But it's not for him. It won't benefit him whatsoever. He is already perfect. It is for us to humble ourselves. Something that Stephen Fry definitely could use. Why? Why <laughs> did you do that to us? Why? You could easily have made a, a creation in which that didn't exist. It is simply not acceptable. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, again, absolutely debunking themselves because they say there is a better way of creating this creation. First and foremost, accepting the premise that this is a creation and therefore they find some sort of flaw with it, apparently, and they would know how to make it better, which would imply yet again that there is better and worse, hence good and evil. But in your worldview, there is no such thing, man. When you die, the lights go off. There is no God. There is no afterlife. You're just a flesh machine. And therefore, it doesn't really matter what you experience. It doesn't even matter if you get old or not. Because if there is no recollection, no memory of your life, you could just die as an infant. Matter of fact, we should all get aborted probably and get it over with. Because what is the point to be born in this flawed creation? And this is why we see that this worldview leads to depression, of course. Check out the European countries. 
this is the percentage of people aged from 18 to 29 who think their lives are meaningless and without any purpose. Poland, 38% in a nationalistic Catholic country, still almost 40% of people see their lives being meaningless and without any purpose. Denmark, 44%, Sweden, 45%, Netherlands, 50%. Those are all very atheistic countries. Germany, allegedly a Christian country, still 52%. Spain, again, allegedly a Christian country, 65%. Romania, according to Andrew Tate, one of the most Christian countries in the world, 69%. The same applies to Italy, Belgium, 70%. In Greece, the origin of Orthodox Christianity, 71%. Bulgaria, my beloved Bulgaria, Orthodox country as well, 75%. Great Britain, 78%, and on top, France, obviously, 79%. So France, of course, spearheaded the liberal movement. This is where it really began. And you see that those atheistic countries ultimately come to the conclusion that there is no meaning in life. Yeah, da, go figure. You're not just an animal. But this is what people reduce themselves to. This is what they're saying. I mean, ultimately, even from a scientific standpoint, we're just animals, aren't we? Everybody with one brain cell left sees that they're not just an animal. We are so uniquely different from everything else here on this planet. But meanwhile, scientists will tell you, you're just another animal. It was Imam al-Ghazali that wrote in The Alchemy of Happiness, the animals are better at being animals than we are at being human. Animals live according to their nature, while humans, endowed with reason, often fail to fulfill their true purpose and potential. Unlike animals, humans possess the ability to understand, seek wisdom, and recognize the divine. But we often neglect these higher faculties. In the Quran we read, Or do you think that most of them hear or understand? They are only like cattle. Nay, they are even further astray from the path. So this is what happens when you reduce the human being to a simple animal. The animal is not reflecting upon its life. You, Stephen Fry, of course do. We do. We seek meaning. We are so different than any other animal. And if you just reduce it to seeking pleasure like an animal, eating, drinking, having sex, then of course you will have a depressed life. Atheism is not just about not believing there is a, is not believing there's a God, but on the assumption that there is one, what kind of God is he? It's perfectly apparent that he is monstrous, is absolutely atheism? monstrous, and deserves no respect whatsoever. The moment you banish him, your life becomes simpler, purer, cleaner, more worth living, in my opinion. All right, so this is it for today's video. I'm going to cut it off here. It's long enough as it is. I said everything I needed to say throughout the video as well. It boils down to the same old thing over and over again. An arrogant, pompous human that believes he knows it all, even though his own science will tell him that his brain is limited and that we do not understand the mysteries of the universe. Nevertheless, those people in their traumatized minds somehow like to believe they know what is right and wrong, even though there is no right and wrong in their world view. They do not like this experience, they hate themselves on some fundamental level, and therefore they project it onto God and call him evil, even though he doesn't exist. And that's what Stephen Fry admitted in the end, because he says, well, atheism is not only about not believing in God, Yes, that's actually what atheism is supposed to be, but well, he doesn't believe it. It is about seeing this alleged God for what he truly is. An evil God, a monster, etc., etc. Man, I thought you don't believe in God. And this is what the atheists always expose about their world view. They always come with silly examples, such as, oh, I don't believe in the spaghetti monster either. Yes, we know you don't, and this is why it is a silly argument, and this is why you make it in the first place because you do not believe in the spaghetti monster and you know very well intuitively that there is no such thing. A spaghetti monster cannot create the universe. Spaghetti has been created way, way later. It is a later invention and therefore it is of course irrational for there to be a spaghetti monster before the dawn of time. It doesn't make sense. Everybody knows that. We don't have to talk about it. However, when we're talking about God, we're talking about the creator of the universe, the first cause, so to speak. 
and everybody feels it intuitively. There even have been studies conducted on the subject where atheists and believers are tested on their response to the word God. And it doesn't matter if they were atheists or believers, the initial intuitive response was always the same. So the word God is already triggering something in the human being. Moreover, when the plane hits turbulences, there are no atheists on that plane. Everybody hopes, wishes, prays for some sort of salvation. Everybody intuitively understands that there is a God. And this is why atheists are so obsessed talking about this subject. I'm firmly convinced that there are no pagan gods, multiple entities, deities that created certain aspects of the universe. Because I firmly believe that this is a lie. I'm not attacking that lie. It is self-evident. So therefore, if it is so blatantly obvious that God doesn't exist to you atheists, why attack the idea in the first place? The reason is because you know that God exists, you know that your perception is flawed, and therefore you need to recruit people into your bubble to reaffirm your delusion. It is very similar to another movement that I'm not going to name here on this platform. They know that it's wrong what they're doing, and therefore they need reaffirmation to tell themselves that it's actually right what they're doing. No, right is right, wrong is wrong. You, on the other hand, have no basis for that claim. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs> Oh